What's up, y'all? Peace and gratitude to everyone watching this video. My name is Deshaun Marvell. Welcome to this channel if you're new. Welcome back if you've already been here. Today, I'm going to be diving into some things that have been on my mind for about a year. Today, we're going to be talking about gender roles, manhood, the problems I have with masculinity, and how it correlates to black masculinity. Now, bear with me because this video is going to be all over the place. These are my thoughts. These are thoughts that I've had for years. These are thoughts that I've had to gather and put into one video. I am going to be generalizing, so do not come in my comments talking about, I know all men and women don't blank. I know. And to all the men watching this, before you comment, before you have anything to say, please listen first. Because I understand what I'm going to be talking about. It's going to be hard for most men to digest and understand. You're either going to be silent while watching this video. You're not going to comment, but you're going to like it on the low. Or you're going to click off when I say something that you don't like. And I just want to say before you even do, before you even think about it, just trust me. Trust me and listen. Don't listen to what you don't like. Don't try to find stuff to disagree with. Just listen to me because I'm going to be here for a minute. So let's not waste no time and get into today's video. Before I get into anything, I want to start with gender expression. Gender expression is how someone outwardly expresses their gender to the external world. Since I was a child, I've been told and shown what a man and a woman is supposed to be. Because we as a culture, we've taken a piece of paper, we've drew a line in the middle and identified certain characteristics and certain traits that align with masculine and feminine. Masculinity is strength, logic, aggression, never depending on no one, goals first and insensitivity. Feminine is weakness, emotion, dependence, insensitivity. When you ask people, what is a man? What is a woman? Now, I'm not going to talk about gender roles because I already have. I've talked about it for about 15 minutes on my second channel, which will be probably right here. I'll put it right here. But I've noticed from interacting with people, from living, I've realized that when you ask people to list what a man or what a woman is, it usually gets into stereotypes and characteristics that literally could be anybody. And stereotypes that fit medieval war times. Showing that what you identify as and what you are born as obviously doesn't matter. And it obviously doesn't equal gender itself. We see gender as gender expression and not gender itself. We make assumptions about people because of the gender roles that we inherit and depending on if you are born with PP or pom pom, these gender roles have created expectations of how men and women are supposed to act. Men aren't supposed to speak like that. Women are supposed to talk like that. Men don't dress like that. You're not dressing like a woman. Men don't walk like that. Men and women have specific pieces of clothing to wear. For example, men wear shoes, sneakers, women wear heels, the length of your nails, being that women are supposed to have long nails and we are supposed to have short nails. Same thing with hair, but at the same time, men are supposed to have longer facial hair and women are supposed to shave their hair. This results in confusion, misrepresentation, and discrimination when someone doesn't fit into the gender role, when someone doesn't express themselves in a way that makes people feel comfortable. Because when you don't express yourself in the stereotype, you're just creating uncertainty in the mind. I've misrepresented many people outwardly and inside my head, especially kids, because most kids look the same until you put them in pink or blue clothes. I've thought lots of kids at my job, for example, were boys or girls out of reflex because I'm so used to seeing boys do this and girls do that. Because just like 99% of the world, I was brainwashed and I was programmed. It's happened to me as well. At my job, for example, since I'm 5'7", and sometimes, you know, I'll stand in certain ways. Maybe I have my hand on my hips. I do that a lot. I'll just sit there with my hands on my hips. And people will literally think I'm a woman until they see my face. And the only reason they know I'm a man is because my facial hair, they see this right here, and they see my hairstyle, which 
women usually don't have this hairstyle because women are told to grow their long hair. Lots of what womanhood is tied to is the ability to grow long hair. So this shows that gender expression and performance is what registers into people's minds and that is what matters to people more than what you were actually born as. Whatever you're seen as, whether it's soft, hard, masculine, feminine, with those perceptions are expectations of how you are supposed to act. You learn it from parents, family, church, school, neighborhood, community in general. They teach you what women and men are supposed to be. And that leads me to the big question. What is a man? What is manhood? What is masculinity? Now, I've had different definitions at different times. Nobody even knows how to define it without stereotyping. And to be honest, <laughs> I don't know either. But what I do know is that what I've been taught is a fucking lie. When I'm talking about masculinity and manhood, I'm talking about these stereotypes. I'm talking about the roots, what it is known for, what it is looked at on a city, country, continent, worldly scale. And it's funny because everybody talks about masculinity, manhood, toxic masculinity, when those aren't the reason we are the way we are. Those aren't the words for it. Lots of you don't understand there is a much bigger problem on a much grander scale that is bigger than manhood, masculinity, and toxic masculinity. And that is patriarchal masculinity. And I'm already knowing this is the time when you click off the video. This is when you call me a simp. This is when you call me gay. This is when you call me soft. This is when you call me a feminist. This is when you call me a pick me because I'm trying to get women and I can't do nothing about that. You're already gone. So to those who are still here, let's get into it. Now, lots of people confuse it with misogyny and sexism. Sexism is just stereotyping somebody based on their gender or AKA what they express. Misogyny is something I will make an entire video on, but to sum it up, it's just the hatred and discrimination against women. Patriarchy is literally an entire system that tells men and women how they should act. It is based on a belief that men have the right to dominate women and children. The idea that they should be subservient, below them, selfless, and caregivers. Patriarchy is not something that's external. You might not think you're a patriarch, or a misogynist, just like you might not think you're a homophobic, transphobic, an ableist, or racist. It's not something that you consciously do. You don't just go outside and say, I hate people with disabilities. I hate people of a certain skin color. I hate homo people. I hate trans people. That's why it's so annoying when people say, I'm not racist. I'm not homophobic. I, I don't hate them. Of course you don't think you are. Of course, you don't think you do. Like, you don't pay attention to it just like how you don't pay attention to your breath, your heartbeat. It already does it by itself because it's subconscious, meaning that it resides in the mind. It affects the way that we perceive and judge ourselves, our relationships, and the world we live in without even realizing it. Patriarchy is this hierarchy. It is this entire system that draws a psychological line that I was talking earlier where one side is masculine, stoic, self-reliance, logic, performance. The other side is feminine, sensitivity, selflessness, patriarchy values and favors men. It favors the masculine. It sees the masculine as above the feminine. And it harms both of us because it forces us to act as if we don't have to or should seek out relationships. And it tells women that they don't have or need a sense of self or confidence because their entire existence revolves around impressing men, which is what the majority of America believes. In many societies, there's pressure to live up to this masculinity scale. But when you are melanated, when you are what this country calls black, it is entirely different. Now, I only said black in the title because that's what most people understand us as. People that look like me, have the same hair texture as me. And you don't even have to have the same te hair texture as me, but I'm saying 
That's what we are perceived as. I don't even like calling myself that because literally, I am not this color. It's seen as a bad thing in this country. It's not something that has been made by us. It's been made by other people of other ethnicities. And black in this country, when you say black, people think of African people and fucking black stereotypes. Because people who aren't around black people have shaped the entire identity of what we are seen as and presented as. So when I say melanated, that is because that is what we are. I was born in America, but I am not black, aka African American. My blood literally comes from Nigeria. So with that being said, I was born a man and a black man. So my expression and what I'm perceived as will be rooted in that identity as a black man. Patriarchal masculinity has shaped and ruined our community in so many ways, especially when it comes to men, because masculinity, manhood, that pressure becomes an even bigger expectation. Because one, we were literally told the only one way to be a man is to fit into white masculinity, aka be a man, take care of your family, all that good stuff. And two, being that we were literally robbed of identity and sense of self through slavery. Yes, I'm sorry you need to hear about slavery again today, but it is true. And I'm not going to act like it's not the truth. Through slavery, through black inferiority propaganda telling us that we lack the qualities to fit into white masculinity, to fit into this country in general. So that resulted in a lack of finance, opportunity and community we compensate by what we can control which is how we are seen so in result we have to exude and portray this extreme dominance aggression swag resulting into us trying to be overtly hyper masculine and lots of y'all who aren't black and even those who are don't even know that you don't even know the history of why you are so hypersexual, overtly aggressive, hypermasculine. And it makes perfect sense when you think about it because they keep the history away from us all the damn time. So with that being said, let's talk about a few things I've observed in the past 20 years when it comes to what masculinity is and how it correlates to growing up around black folks. First is the fact that masculinity is tied to cutting off feelings. Most men are taught to have extreme reliance, you know, need to do everything on your own. You are taught to shame and avoid every single emotion that you have, except if it is an emotion towards sex or anger. Don't chase feelings. Aspiration for physical, sexual, and intellectual dominance. Don't feel women. Devalue their opinions, their body's worth, in their sense of self. Condemn anything feminine with another man or seeing any type of affection for another man, perceiving that as being sexually attracted to them, aka gay. And we'll get to that later, trust me. With these type of mindsets, we wonder why men are so lonely. We wonder why men are so lost and can't find love because I swear to God, I see like 30 videos on my algorithm about how men are lonely, lost, and can't find love. And it makes it so difficult coming into manhood because you start to realize, especially when you turn like 18, when you're legal and seen as a young man, it really does hurt to say, but most people don't actually love you. And I truly mean that. Everybody, your friends, peers, classmates, workmates, parents, blood, most of them don't actually love you. When you're born, the world loves you off of existence and presence. Then all of a sudden, 18 years later, you gotta pay bills and everyone looks at you like you're just a number, just a role, a person who has to fit into the system or you will be homeless, poor, and worthless because that's what people see them as. You go from loved on existence to being loved by how much you fit into the masculine stereotype. And it's so sad because I see kids at my job all the time. I work at a job where I interact with people. I literally have bonds with some people's kids. They wave at me, they smile. Some have even asked me for a hug. They're so full of love, so full of energy. 
And it just makes me sad because I know for a fact at one point in life, someone's going to tell them that that isn't okay. Because there's a certain point in majority of men's lives where hugs and kisses from your dad turn into handshakes. Where you stop calling your dad daddy and you start to call him dad. Where you need an aid because you fell off your bike. It turns into a liability and people call you a crybaby, a bitch pussy. You're supposed to suck it up, keep it going, knowing if you were born with pom pom, you wouldn't even be given that energy and people would not talk to you like that. Personally, I'd say around the time you turn seven to 10 is when the masculine indoctrination starts. That's when you got to stop crying. That's when you got to stop hanging out with your sister. You got to stop hanging around your mom because I don't want my son to be soft. And then you go into middle school age and most kids want to fit in. That is the time where you need to find your place. You need to find what you want to do. And it's funny because we always think boys are disconnecting with people, their selves and their emotions because of masculinity. Like it's a result. Like it's something that's happening after when no, disconnection is masculinity in itself. It's not a result. It's literally a requirement to what they all say is being a man. And then we get older into our late teens. We feel that shame. We feel this facade. We don't give into this shame. We don't question this shame. We don't take the time to heal, a.k.a question the source. We don't ask where this came from. Why do I feel this shame? Why do I feel bad about feeling bad? What most men do is take this shame, run away from it, and put all this energy into the pursuit of power, money, respect, cars, clothes, women. And with those pursuits, we distract ourselves with work, drinking, rage. And it's so annoying when people act like men are just waking up and being bad people when literally all children come out the womb full of joy, full of energy, they come out nice unless you traumatize them or teach them that feeling does not matter. You have to train boys to be shitty. They don't come out the womb like this because they learn and adapt to what they see. They see what gets the smiles. They see what gets the respect. They see what gets the power and the money. And they adapt to that. They're looking up to their fathers. They're growing up watching their favorite anime characters, their cartoon characters, superheroes, athletes, their peers. They learn through all of these outlets that you cannot be masculine and open at the same time. Masculinity literally requires you to be an unbothered, overconfident, hypersexual, violent machine. And speaking of violence, masculinity is also tied to that. And this is turned up to 10 when you are black because of the overcompensation. We have accepted and embraced it even in each other. Saying things like kill or be killed. Saying things like it's a dog eat dog world. And this isn't true. It's only true because we have made it this way. Since everyone feels this way and the fact that we don't question the source, we just go with the program, aka since you're shitty, I think I have to be shitty as well to survive, which is understandable and it makes sense. But like I said, that's not true. It's only true because we have made it this way. Men or boys are obviously more likely to perpetrate violence, to cause violence, sexual violence, homicide, crime in general. Men are also likely to die by homicide and suicide. And black demographics are even higher when it comes to these subjects. And you really think masculinity just has nothing to do with it? You think it has nothing to do with it? It's just the way the world is. You, you really want to tell me, you really want to lie to my face and tell me that it has nothing to do with any of these things. Fine. We'll see by the end of the video. I mean, come on. Look at all the real life play games that we used to play as kids. Look at all the video games, boys and men, a.k.a. your son, brother, nephew, and your cousin play. Most of them involve violence, murder, and domination. And I'm not saying every game has to be rainbows and sunshine and Super Mario, but come on. Games like GTA and Call of Duty, they should not be as popular as they are. It's honestly scary 
how beloved these games are. Because violence is the only way we know how to express ourselves. And it's the only emotion allowed by men. We were ourselves when we came out the womb. And eventually someone told us that you are not enough. You are not enough. You need to be this character. You need to be this lie. You need to be this facade. And we wonder why we're so angry and violent all the damn time. We wonder why every time something escalates, somebody has to throw a fist. Somebody has to prove their self. Because part of our anger comes from the fact that we don't know how to navigate in situations and conflicts. So we only react in situations with the only way we know how to, and that is violence and conflict. So anytime conflict comes, you react in the only way that you have been allowed to feel, which is anger. Masculinity and manhood is also tied to work. And like I said, it is turned up to 10 when you are black because of the overcompensation of the lack of resources. We literally got out of slavery just to go right back in it. And we're to the point now where you gotta have three jobs and two side hustles just to make ends meet. And since most black people don't realize that we are a product, we are a commodity that is exploited, consumed, and used more than any other race, since most people don't know this, organizations, companies, corporations, use lots of black people that are struggling and are in survival mode because they know lots of them will take anything. They will take and do anything, even if it damages them, damages their bodies, and even if it affects the black community in a negative way because whoever's at the top of the black community, that's what people see us as because most people that consume, exploit, and use black people aren't interacting with black people. Their perception comes from the movies and the news. We are literally taught the only way to prove that you're a man is to prove that you are invulnerable. Prove that you can't lose. That you are a warrior in a world full of emotional pussy bitches. Capitalism, hustle culture, the whole concept of grinding is all a competition of who can kill themselves the most? Who can get hit the most? Who can bleed the most? and come out as a winner. That right there, that's the man. That's the man right there. The man who broke his body and did what he needed to do. He was such a man. What lots of y'all don't know is the fact that women internalize their pain and we do it externally through violence, fights, and sports. And in these situations lie a condition that all men suffer from. Or if you don't suffer from it, you're taught that it exists, and it's something that I call PCD. What does PCD stand for? What is that? It stands for power, control, and dominance. This is the idea that all men struggle with. We all have to label things so we can feel comfortable. We have to label ourselves and people as winners or losers. Man enough or a girl. One up, one down. Someone always has to be better or worse. Someone always has to be top or bottom. And you'll say, well, that's how the world works. When no, it's not. We only feel that way because we have made it this way. And sports play a huge part in masculinity. And I don't give a flying fuck what you talking about. It is not about friendly competition. Because I've played with lots of people. I've played in lots of different gyms. Nobody cares about competition in the end. It is about ego and pride. Sports in the end are just televised dick measuring contests. That's why we will play with an injured broken hand or a foot for a made up trophy or championship that isn't even real. And I know I have one right here. But I understand that this is not real. I understand it's just man-made metal on man-made leather. And I didn't have to break my body to get it. And I know it's hard to believe. I know it's hard for lots of y'all because y'all play sports. You have played it your whole life and I have too. As much as I love sports, I love myself more than sports. And I'm not gonna be delusional and lie to myself to justify why I'm playing. It only exists to keep people distracted. Sports are not real. Sports promote division. And it's sad that as men, we just beat our bodies up every day and justify it as a, 
workout, getting in shape, or because we love doing it. And that's not true because your body literally does not like working out. Your body does not like working. Your body does not like playing sports. That's why you have to lift weights and do all that so your body can adapt to all the pain that your body does not like. And two, because simply in nature, when God or whatever you want to call the creator of the universe, sports and gyms weren't here. They're not real. They were made up, which for lots of people, that is so hard for people to accept. And speaking of work, masculinity and manhood is also tied to protecting and providing. Now, I have never minded and don't mind protecting and providing. I don't mind paying for people's stuff. I don't mind giving to people. I give all day. I give people money, shoes, food all the time. And I will protect anybody that I love when it comes down to it. I will kill for anybody that I love just like anybody else. But I don't think anybody has ever thought about this deeply. And I'm about to fuck with lots of y'all minds. Because with most men, we talk about health and working out. We always end up talking about the gym, especially now with the gym bros taking over TikTok, taking over social media. But me personally, I don't go to the gym. I don't care about lifting, don't care about sports anymore or as much as I used to. And let's be honest, most men are playing sports and going to the gym because they're coping with the fact that they got bullied. They're shorter than six feet. They want to get girls because they aren't attractive or they want to be seen as intimidating so they don't get bullied again. And we justify why we work out lift weights and make money with the saying, protecting and providing for our family, protecting and providing from something happening. And which the main usage of this phrase is always with somebody breaking into your house. I understand, obviously, if somebody breaks into my house, I'm going to defend myself and my family to the best of my abilities. Not because that's what a manly man does that's what any sane person would do what the fuck do y'all be talking about bro (laughs) but that's not even the funny part those are obviously valid points you know you're working out and making money to protect and provide but have you ever asked yourself why we never ask why the world is like this we never ask why is there a world where i have to get up slave go to school, go to work, do things I don't want to do every single day of my life just so my family can eat and enjoy life. I talked about this in my hustle culture video, which will be right up here. Mm, Such a good video. The even bigger question is, okay, I'm providing, I'm working, working out, protecting so someone doesn't break into my house, right? Why has nobody ever asked, dude, why the fuck are you breaking into my house? Why the fuck are we going to war? Why do I have to protect myself from fucked up people who are insecure, can't control themselves, have pain and envy inside of themselves? Why do I have to live in a world? Why do I have to lock my door? Because you are full of greed and envy. We have to live in a world where you have to lock your house, your car, Because somebody might take it. Because people are so selfish that you have to lock your door. Because this nigga is trying to take your car. Stores should not have to lock up at night. But the world is so greedy and evil that we can't even imagine a world where these things don't exist. And I can't either. I can't imagine a house without a lock. I can't imagine a car without a lock. I can't imagine... A car without keys. A car that you can just get in and drive. Because it's your car. But it can't be your car because somebody eventually is going to take it. Because everybody is full of greed, individualism, the effects of capitalism are crazy. That's why I made a video on it. And I know lots of y'all are saying, Okay, if you aren't protecting anything... Who's going to protect the women? Who's going to protect the children? And to answer that question, obviously, you aren't fucking listening. That's the reason why we have to carry guns. That's the reason why we need the military, why we need locks on doors. All of this is not just because it's how the way it is. 
it is cause of masculinity and manhood. As long as the world is fucked up, we will always have things, women, and children, and houses and cars to protect and defend. We are not in medieval times anymore. We literally have all the resources to be happy and whole, but we still aren't because we have made this a part of our identity. Because think about it. If the world was full of kindness and peace, there would be nothing to protect. Lots of you men would be lost. You'd have no purpose. We literally need violence, greed, and anger so we can have masculinity in itself. And I just said something really deep that I don't even think lots of y'all are going to understand. Now, let's talk about attention because more than anything, oh my God. I'm not going to sit here and lie. Dudes are in the gym for other people. I've been there. Dudes are playing sports for other people. Dudes are making money. People want to make six figures so they can buy and own things to impress other people and disguise it as leaving a legacy, leaving my kids with something. Like, come on, bro. Let's be fucking honest. Most people that have money, like, I'm sure there's a part of you that believes that, but most people want money so they can just buy a whole bunch of dumb shit. Our whole purpose as people, but men especially, is to impress women. Because not a single man on earth would be chasing money, cars, and clothes if women did not exist. Let's be honest. Our whole persona of this stoic, unfazed, masculine man, honestly, lots of y'all deserve Oscars because... I've seen it. Dudes have a huge problem with pretending to be strong when they feel weak. Pretending to be confident when they aren't even confident. Most men I know are fake confident. They don't even have a reason to be confident. They aren't genuinely confident. They're just putting on a facade. And this is even more prevalent when you are black. Because we always have to keep up this exaggerated swagger of a black teen. This nothing phases me this i don't give a fuck attitude because like i said the overcompensation because we don't have resources financially to be masculine men we don't have nothing to control and all humans want control most people in the u.s see control as having a lot of money socially and financially and most of the time we don't have no power so you have to make up for it somehow that's why we struggle the most because this need of hardness this need to show people that you ain't pussy, that you ain't soft. And it makes me sad because this is all I've seen growing up. Most, if not the majority of the fights that I've been in in life, all of them involved either a girl or the need to show that you ain't pussy. One or the other. There was no in between. None of them were reasonable. Every time I've gotten into a fight, it did not need to go there. And these are men across all ages. You can just see it in men that they're just seeking the love that they never got. And I can see it. I can see the insecurity within men. I can feel it. And because their whole purpose is to just be seen as that dude to women that they don't even care about. They just want to use them as a sex quest so they can feel like a man or so they can impress their boys. Or they're trying to prove to men that they see as masculine that they are masculine. It's the reason why when you aren't boxing and instead you want to play chess, when instead of rapping, maybe you want to listen to or you want to make R&B or alternative music, you don't grow through with it. Or you make sure you play it when nobody is around. That's why there's literally a meme where you listen to certain songs when the homies are gone. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about too. And you know why people laugh? Because it's true. Manhood, masculinity, what people call toxic masculinity is really just patriarchal masculinity. And yes, I understand men built bridges, men won wars, and created things, but at what cost? Lots of death, loss, pain, envy has led us to this point and we're so numb to violence that we can't imagine a world where we aren't operating out of patriarchal masculinity. Be a man. Do what you want. Take what you want. Wear what you want to wear. Be yourself. You, you wear pink. Put on the nails. Wear some makeup. Wear certain clothes. You're not being a man, buddy. We tell each other to be ourselves. Be a man. 
And then when we do what we want to do, we're not men because we don't fit the stereotype. And this is why I say masculinity is a lie. Because if we're going off the definition, wouldn't that make you not a man? Because we say certain things, and I swear, it's like we we pick and choose when to call someone masculine and feminine. We, We try to pick and choose when to use it, when it fits certain biases and narratives. We say certain things, and then we do the exact opposite. We say masculinity is defending yourself, blah, blah, blah. So it's like every time somebody insults you, you have to fight them, right? But wouldn't that make you the complete opposite because you're supposed to be strong and stoic and unbothered and unfazed? It it makes no sense. And we just keep flip-flopping and moving the goalpost. And that's why I say we don't know what this shit is. We don't know. We say we're strong, but we lie every day. Every single day we're telling people we are okay when we aren't okay. We say we're strong. We say we're confident. We say we're bold. But we act like we aren't hurt when we fall. Acting like you don't love that girl because you want to prove to your boys that you can't love a hoe. And that's why it hurts me seeing men every day. Because it's like you can see the soul in them. You can tell that they're nice. Usually they're like assholes in public. Then when you're one-on-one with them, nicest, genuine, realest people ever. But when we get around each other, when we're all in one place, we all come together and put on this community facade. Most of the dudes you know, they literally will find something funny and avoid laughing. Lots of men will avoid compliments, avoid giving compliments. They will neglect love. They will push it away because they have had it beaten out of them. We all don't know what we're doing, but instead of embracing that, we distract ourselves with sports, entertainment, drinking, smoking, school, instead of questioning things. Instead of questioning the source, we just keep going with the program. Since masculinity means clinging to one side and disowning the other side, a.k.a. the PCD condition that I talked about, the idea of strength versus weak, dominated or dominating, loser or winner, with these mindsets, you're not even taught to just disconnect from the feminine. You're taught to hate the feminine. And personally to me and what people describe masculinity as, it's just whatever a woman isn't. Like our focus is more on not being women than actually being men. We just do our best not to be a girl, a bitch, a wuss, a softy, and of course, gay. Not being masculine is only associated with gay men, those who show flamboyance, and those who don't have no sex appeal because they don't fit into the masculine stereotype. And I've talked about the compensation and the facade we have to put up as melanated men since we don't have the resources. I've talked about that already because it fits into literally every single point that I've named so far. This also goes into this point as well because since we are stripped from masculinity and slavery, meaning that our access to capital and self-esteem was gone. In result, we have compensated by fitting into white masculinity times 10. And we never ask how black masculinity can be expressed. We never have had our own definition. We just ask, how can we preserve it? How can we gatekeep it? How can we make sure it's protected? Because we want to compete with white masculinity. So when you grow up, You are taught to not respect queerness or womanhood in the same way that you do manhood. We don't see anyone other than men being our equal. So when we see black men behaving in a way that doesn't fit traditional manhood, aka people who are wearing certain clothes, talking certain ways, having certain mannerisms, wearing certain colors, we become angry, we become offended, we become disgusted because we're seeing ourselves in the place of non-dominance. We're seeing ourselves as below because we aren't fitting into the stereotype. And this is coming from a former Christian, which I really wasn't. I just grew up being taught Christian values and that I needed to be Christian. I was literally taught that homosexuality was a sin. You literally are taught that God will not accept you in the afterlife because you happen to like 
the other gender. And America's religion is Christianity. So it makes sense why most people that you know are homophobic, as well as growing up listening to hip hop, which promotes, I don't feel, I have no compassion, I have no sensitivity, I am cold hearted, I don't trust anybody, I can't trust a woman. So whether you want to admit it or not, some of this, even though you might not express some of these things, even though you might not go out and and do the things that you hear in this music, some of it translates into your real life subconsciously. And there's a certain numbness to things that you hear in this music. One of the most popular ways that we express homophobia is through what I like to call zestification. This is a thing people do where we need to like find the gayness in people. For example, lots of gay jokes have to do with sex and it's so like dehumanizing because all we do is just act like gay people, all they think about is sex. Most gay jokes are all about gay people are horny and they are always on 10, they are always on go mode, they are always ready to have sex and it's it's not okay. Like we don't even treat them like people. They're not treated as people with interests, people with hobbies, people with personalities. We're always trying to prove somebody is gay. I mean, look at the recent stuff with P. Diddy, for example. Most of people's arguments and talking points are not about the sex trafficking, the kidnapping, the rape, the abuse. Nobody cares. Everything is about the gay stuff that he did. Lots of that is also patriarchy because people don't care about women, but most of it is homophobia because gay is seen as funny. Gay equals wildin' out. Everything is no homo. Nah, you gay, bro. You sus. You're zesty, sassy, ayo, glazing. All that is homophobia, whether you want to admit it or not. And we don't realize the damage that we're doing because one, lots of people aren't interacting with these people which makes sense because it's the same way with misogyny, racism, ableism, and because being gay isn't seen as human. You're not seen as a person. That's so stupid because if you like boys and you were born with pum pum, nobody would say anything. That little thing right there, that little change would change your entire way of how you're being perceived, it would change your entire lifestyle just because you happen to like boys. You know, we call each other gay all the time. It is an insult because to society, you don't make sense. They don't understand. You are not real is what they think. In high school, I swear to God, and I know lots of y'all have experienced this, the basketball and people who are on the football team were the most homosexual people I've ever met in my life. And I don't mean that as an insult. Like the stuff that they were doing, I could go on for days. But we will say no homo because homo is bad. I mean, to be honest, I have conversations with some dudes and I'll just say something just to throw them off. And I won't say no homo. I haven't said no homo in about a year. Because if you are gay or are perceived as gay, you are bullied. You are seen as less of a man, meaning you aren't respected. And that's why I hate when people say, I don't hate gay and trans people. I, I don't hate them. I, I, don't, I don't hate anybody. Most of us on this earth don't hate each other. And it's not about the hate. It's about the respect. It's about the, the decency, being seen as a person. And I know that's because I grew up with a cousin who was gay. I grew up with someone who was one of my best friends in elementary school, and he was too. I grew up hearing F slurs all the time, and I was indoctrinated that homo equals bad. So it was very hard for me to admit that I had homophobic biases. And our mind is so focused on gay, zesty, sassy, that we, we even disregard the fact that people are bi. And transgender because most people don't care or want to understand you're just instantly classified as gay i knew a dude in high school who was bi he liked girls and dudes but nobody seen him as that nobody cared about the fact that he liked girls too everyone cared about the fact that he was gay 
because like I said, justification. Because of the PCD of you have to be one or the other. You have to be top or bottom. Which one is the man in the relationship? Are you man or woman? Which one wears the pants? That That is what I'm talking about. That is the PCD. And one thing about me is I do not believe in jokes because most jokes are what people actually feel and they just have something to fall back on if you get offended or you say something back. And most jokes about homosexual people, bisexual people, transgender people, they're not funny and they never have been funny. We just say mean, cruel things and then call people soft when they react after you just said mean, cruel thing. But even if you are joking, even if you are, which most people are not, you can't just be blatantly racist, homophobic, transphobic, sexist, ableist, misogynistic, and then <laughs> when people aren't okay with it, you call them soft. Or you say things like, the world is too sensitive. This world is so sensitive nowadays, which is something I've heard a million times. No, the world is not sensitive. You're just a bad person. The world is not getting soft. The world is not getting sissified and the world is not too feminine. You are not funny. Another thing I want to talk about is the fact that we are only so attracted to women because we are programmed to be through the not even love, but sexualization of women's breasts and buttocks. Let's be honest. I know this sounds crazy. <laughs> I know this sounds crazy. But think about it and be honest with yourself. If girls and dudes had the same size titties and asses, lots of y'all wouldn't be straight. And I know it sounds crazy. That is why there is a talking point of breaking up with a girl who didn't tell you that she used to be a guy. Even though you could have surgery to get a vagina or you can do all you can to look like a woman. You could be a dude wearing makeup lip gloss, stuff that girls wear, right? You could have feminine qualities, act like a woman. Dudes will still see a man and will always see a man, even though they could like you and even feel for you without even knowing that you transitioned. The thought of it is just disgusting to them. And if you ask me, I think lots of men are gay, to be honest. I think lots of y'all are, <laughs> and y'all are just trying to fight it. That's why it makes lots of you uncomfortable because you're scared that you might like it. And that brings me into the main point of this section. And that's the fact that we spend more time not being gay than actually being straight. You're probably like, what are you talking about? Please chill, relax, and listen. Especially as black men... Since our masculinity is more fragile, it's made out of glass, we have to constantly overstate, oversay, and overprove our attraction to women. I've never seen any other race but mine when I was growing up it just constantly need to prove that they were attracted to girls. Because as a black dude, you don't have the freedom to be you except if it's violent, sexy hood nigga stereotype. So if you aren't proving that you have lots of women, you at least, at least have to prove or show that you aren't gay. And this is so deep, we don't really notice it in our literal existence and how we interact with each other every single day. Think about it. Think about what I'm about to say, okay? When we apologize, we say, my bad, bro. When someone does something for us, we say, appreciate it. Some people say, preach only because I'm sorry and thank you sounds too gay. It sounds too soft. We dap up instead of hug because hugging would be too soft, too gay. When we compliment men, we don't say he's a nice, kind guy. We say he's real cool because that is more masculine and less ill gay. Lots of y'all straight up don't clean y'all butt in the shower. <laughs> you don't wipe when you pee. You don't cut your nails. You don't wear lip balm because ill 
Okay. We make sure we eat the hot dog a certain way, eat it from the side, cut it up, eat it in pieces, make sure you don't eat the hot dog just like this. And I'm not saying no homo either. You make sure you do that or you eat it privately when nobody's looking because, ew, gay. When someone is good at something, we say, he's tough, he's fire. We don't say he's good or he's amazing because that's too soft. We say, how you doing? Instead of how you feeling. I feel like everybody who is attractive, we should all call each other beautiful, men or women. But we don't do that. We have a word for that, and that is called handsome. Because it sounds more manly and less ill gay. And one of the sayings I've gotten many times from dudes. I've actually got it from dudes more than girls. And it's the saying, lots of you have probably heard it before. If you've said it to someone before, and it's the phrase, you look like you get girls. You know why we say that? Because simply saying you're attractive, ew, gay. And lots of y'all are so stuck in this mindset that you can't even admit when a dude is attractive. You can't accept or even give a compliment to a dude without saying no homo, without feeling some type of way. Lots of girls find me attractive and guys as well. And I know this because literally at work, every single day, half of the men I talk to, I will literally see them get nervous talking to me. I've seen dudes literally drop things, drop their phone, drop their keys, drop their pen, making eye contact with me. And lots of y'all won't admit, a partial reason why you are friends with your friends, the reason you idolize certain men, the reason why you look up to certain men or watch the men that you watch, including me, is because they are attractive to you. And when I say the word attractive, here's when the PCD comes in. I don't mean sexually because we always think guy equals attractive. That equals I am gay and I want to fuck that dude. When that is not what it means. And like I said, that is the PCD in your mind. The need to label things. The need to say, are you gay or are you straight? Are you one or the other? You won't admit that you find men attractive. And saying it doesn't have anything to do with sex. All it means is that there is a lack of certainty within someone's face. It means your face is understandable. Your face fits the beauty standard. Some of you might find me attractive. Some of you might not. But I feel like I am. And from what I've seen out in life, lots of people think I am as well. My face is mostly symmetrical. I don't have a big nose that doesn't fit the beauty standard. I don't have big lips. Well, I do have big lips, but I don't have lips that don't fit the beauty standard. My nose is right here. My nose isn't on the side. My eyes aren't uneven. That's because the beauty standard and the programming, which I talked about in this video right here, attractive faces are easy to digest. And that's something that I feel like most people do not understand about attraction. But like I said, the PCD will have you not admit that. So there's nothing I could do there. Now it is time to talk intimacy because the acceptance and needing to show people that you aren't homosexual is because as men, there are zero safe spaces to be intimate or show affection without one, saying no homo or two, feeling shame. The only intimacy that is allowed and accepted is with our parents. And even then, when you get older, it's more watered down or it even stops. And we as men, we crave intimacy. I see it in men every single day. Look at our daily interactions. We will always say what's up. We'll always do the what's up or you're one of those who do the what's up like this. We will always ask, how you doing? We'll give a dap up, a fist bump, an elbow. We can easily talk and care about each other. We just choose to talk and care about stuff that doesn't matter stuff that is meaningless. We talk about nonsense and stuff that serves no purpose. We will talk about sports, politics, memes, movies, money, bank accounts, and women all day. But when it comes to trauma, when it comes to them insecurities, when it comes to them struggles, fear, we disappear because women are taught to talk about those things. Women are taught to alter their sense of self through 
catering to other people while we are taught to alter our sense of self through performance. And in between both of those dynamics, none of us are taught intimacy. And think about everything I've said and how it ties together. We engage with violence to compensate for wanting physical contact. Why do you think we play fight? Why do you think men love sports and games that involve domination, winners and losers, and who's going to die first? Because like I said earlier, it's the only emotion or expression allowed. Growing up around black folks, bro, look, I just said it right there. We always say bro, fam, cuz, dog, my nigga, anything you want to name. When we talk in conversation, we say these things because we crave intimacy. We crave love. We crave friendship. We crave brotherhood. We crave romantic relationships. Why do you think we crave and are so obsessed with sex so much because we're only allowed to be sex machines or violent. And because we don't have daily doses of intimacy, we bury all that energy and we bring it all out when we're having sex. In fights, violence, sports, video games. And most people don't realize that. One thing about me when it comes to my relationships, intimacy is a requirement in any relationship sexual or non-sexual because we tend to only think that intimacy is just romantic partner person that you're supposed to marry and that's it when that's not true because i've had so many deep intimate moments with not even just women but people in general and it's different every time but that's what makes it so beautiful just looking in people's eyes seeing what's behind those pupils actually listening and understanding why people are the way they are. And I love every second of it because it's so deep and I'm not ashamed of saying it. I've always wanted love. I've always wanted intimacy. I wanna chill in bed with my romantic partner in nature, you know, looking in each other's eyes, talking about anything, sitting in the bed naked, having a conversation with no need to perform sexually. Any girl that I've had sex with or done anything sexual with, I've always had a connection with them. It was never just about sex. All men want this. It's just the world hasn't given us a space to feel comfortable to say it. And it's the same thing with my friendships with guys. I want intimacy. I want real connection. But instead, most of my convos and bonds with men have been trash. And I'm tired of having competitions disguised as friendships, bonding over sports that aren't even real, bonding over how much women we get and how much we can treat them like trash. I want real friends, man. I want real relationships. I really do. I want intimacy. I want love. I want it. And it takes me a lot to say that because my whole life I've been taught that it's something that I should want. So that brings me to the big question that I asked earlier. What is a man? A human being who happened to be born with PP. And that's it. And since I was born with PP instead of pom pom, masculine man is my gender identity because of the socialization that society has made up and caused. And then added on being black adds the double socialization because now you're not just supposed to act like a man, you're supposed to act like the stereotype of a black man. And if you aren't, you aren't man enough. I'm associated with violence. I'm associated with misogyny and degrading sex, but I don't express that. So I completely understand why I'd be less manly, less worthy of respect to lots of women and men. And I'm willing to lose that acceptance because I refuse to be loved on how much of a man I am. I want to be loved for how much of a me I am. And if I'm not manly enough for you, cool. I don't have nothing to prove to you. I've never had anything to prove to anybody, and I don't need to be for you. I will still show love. I will still be romantic. I will still be intimate. I will still be vulnerable, even if it makes me look weak, even if it makes me look soft. I will still love even after you break me because I have been there. 
I have been broken. I've been manipulated. I've been double crossed, triple crossed, cheated on, left, abandoned, and I still have my heart. I am many things, and weak isn't close to one of them. That doesn't mean I will let anyone walk over me. That doesn't mean I won't defend myself. I am many things, and weak isn't even close to one of them. I am myself, and being myself means that I am done with this facade. I'm done being man enough, and even more importantly, I am tired of being man enough. This shit is fucking exhausting. It is genuinely exhausting trying to be stoic all the damn time, acting like I'm happy all the damn time, acting like everything is okay all the damn time, being this hard, need to show I'm not pussy persona. It is tiring. Constantly feeling like I don't need help. Constantly having to fight and stand up for everybody plus myself. It is tiring. I'm not going to be this nonchalant dude that patriarchy needs me to be. I'm also not going to be Mr. Unfazed, exaggerated swagger, fake confidence. I'm also not going to be Mr. Thug, hood, violent sex symbol that slavery and black inferiority propaganda has taught me to be. Because I'm not that. I am myself. I am high spirited. You damn right I'm loving. You damn right I'm caring. You damn right I'm sensitive. And again, it's not just about crying. Because all we think, PCD, again, sensitive equals crying. And you th- you're thinking of me sobbing. When that's not it. Sensitive feeling is just simple things like smiling. Complimenting somebody, admitting that everything isn't perfect, admitting that you miss shots, admitting that you aren't perfect, admitting that you aren't having a good day. Just admitting that is so freeing because you don't have to be in this box that you've been told to be in since before you even came out the womb. The last thing I want for me, my relationships, if I have kids, the last thing I want for the world. The last thing I want from me is leaving this world cold hearted. Now, everything isn't wrong with us as men. I'm not saying we have to stop being masculine, but we need to be honest with ourselves. We need to stop lying to ourselves. We need balance, intimacy, wholeness, and most importantly, we need to be ourselves because most men are not themselves. And it's time to challenge our behavior. But the only thing stopping us is fear. And you only fear because you don't want to be seen as less of a man. And that right there shows two things. One, people that you think love you don't love you. They just love you on how much you fit into the stereotype. They don't love you. And I'm sorry to tell you that, but that's just the truth. And two, you care too much. And you have low self-esteem. And that's not a good or a bad thing because the truth isn't good or bad. The truth is just the truth. And real self-esteem, not performance-based self-esteem that we've been taught, real self-esteem comes from not worrying about being better than or less than, being man enough or woman enough. It comes from doing what is natural to you. It comes from understanding that you are enough. You've been enough. You will always be enough. There's lots of reprogramming I've had to do that I still have to do. And I'm going to mess up. I'm going to make mistakes. But I'm going to try to be the best me I can be. And I have to. We have to. All of us as a community, a country, we all have to. Because we aren't making better people. We're just making better actors. Now, I've started this video process in June of 2023, believe it or not. So I am finally, oh, I'm so glad to have brought this vision to life. Hopefully this helps and gives y'all new perspectives to understand. And I really hope this video blows up more than any video that I've ever posted. Because men, especially younger ones, because the older ones, I can't tell them anything. They're not going to listen to some light-skinned dude in a pink shirt and pajamas tell them why. Come on. Come on. Let's be realistic. Gen Z boys, 
black boys, I know they need it because I see where things are heading and it just does not look good for guys. Thank you so much for watching today's video. This took so much energy out of me. Make sure you like this video. Comments, ring the bell next to the subscribe button so you can stay notified with my content. Share this around to your family and your friends. Subscribe if you are new to this channel. Subscribe to the second channel, which has vlogs and damn my life content. And subscribe to my third channel, which has album reactions. I'm listening to old albums on there. I'm doing tier list and your woofa foos. These will all be in the description down below. If you ever need advice, perspective, questions about me, things you want to say, video requests, or if you just want to talk, you can always DM me at Deshaun Marvell. Until then, be good to good people. Stay grateful. Stay patient. Heal. Love everyone. And trust their vision for life. I'll see you on the next video. Make sure you be safe. And God bless your soul.